So in this video, I want to compare two problems involving exponential equations. To the untrained eye, these two problems may look very similar. However, they're very different in the approaches that we have available to solve them. Starting with the one on the left, if you've worked with exponential equations before, you may realize very quickly that 64 can be written as 4 to the power of 3. Writing it in this way allows me to make the observation that both sides of the equation now have a base of 4. This simplifies my problem greatly and lets me just consider the exponents, which happens to be a very simple linear equation. In a few steps, I can rearrange to solve for x, and I've solved for the value of x, which makes this equation true. To check my answer, I can graph both of these functions and find the point of intersection, confirming that 2.5, or 5 over 2, is the solution to this equation. My goal in this video is to show you why I don't have to use logs in this first problem, but I'm forced to in this second problem. So I guess I can change this question to when do you have to use logs to solve exponential equations? Let's dig into the second problem a little deeper. Remember in the first problem, the first observation I made was that I could take 64 and write it as a base of 4 to the power of 3. This was convenient because the other side of the equation involved a base of 4 also. In the problem on the right, you're going to see that I run into difficulty very quickly. There's no way I can take 4 and write it as a base of 3, and there's no way I can take 3 and write it as a base of 4. So we're forced to use another strategy. Now I could just jump right to a graphing calculator to solve this problem. Typing in both sides of the equation as separate functions and finding the point of intersection would tell me that I get 2.141. But you don't always have a graphing calculator handy, and the point of this video is to help you develop some algebraic strategies to solve equations using logs. So let's take a different approach. So from previous studies or previous video lessons that you've watched on this channel, you know that logarithmic and exponential functions are inverses of each other. Taking the log of an exponential essentially undoes the exponential effect. Or the analogy I use is that it's like you're cutting down the exponent from the top of a tree and placing it in front of your log. Now that's what I've done in this problem, taking the log of both sides and then rewritten my expression with the exponents in front of my logarithmic expressions. You can see this problem will already be exponentially more difficult than the last one. So for the remainder of the solution, I want you to remember that the log of 4 and the log of 3 are really just constant terms, otherwise known as numbers. If you punch in log 4 on your calculator, you'll get something like 0 0.6021. And if you type log of 3, you'll get something like 0 0.4771. So if you consider these to just be numbers, what comes next shouldn't be that bizarre, although it does look strange. I'm going to use the distributive property to multiply log 4 into this set of brackets and do the same thing on the right side of the equation with log 3. And I can write the result in this way. So think of this log business as just a simple coefficient on x. Negative log 4 and 2 log 3 are just constant terms. So at this point we can solve this equation just like we did in the first example when we had x plus 5 equals 3x. We brought all the x terms over to one side, collected our like terms, and solved for x. We're going to do the same thing here bringing all the x terms over to the left side, and all the non-x terms over to the right side. What I can do is make the observation that both of these terms have x in common. I can common factor x out of these two terms. Because I'm multiplying x times this mess, I can divide that mess over to the other side, leaving me with x equals an even bigger mess. So if you thought 5 over 2 was bad, this fraction is exponentially worse. Okay, I'll stop with the exponent puns. Sorry, but they just work. Now log equations are kind of similar to trigonometric equations in that we like exact answers. I mean, if you punch this into your calculator, you're going to see that you get approximately 2.1407, which you might remember was the solution that we got before from the graphing calculator. So either of these is correct, but this one's just considered more exact. So to answer the question, when do you have to use logs? You have to use logs any time that you can't write one side of the equation as the same base of the other. Now that's not to say that I couldn't use logs for the first example, but as you saw here, these solutions can get pretty complex, and people like to avoid long, tedious calculations whenever possible. Well, most people. Stay tuned for more log videos to come. As usual, thanks for watching. Thanks.